Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dancing Sober Podcast. Thank you so much for being here and um, for listening to what we do here. Uh, we're not inside Espacio again this week, but I do want to thank Espacio for always supporting us. So don't forget to visit Espacio1839.com on the internet or come visit them in person at Espacio. I mean, I'm sorry. Or come visit them in person at 1839 East 1st Street, right by Mariachi Plaza. Um, this week we have uh, a friend of mine, an artist that I've known since 2014, Welcome to the studio, Rashid Buhamidi. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dancing Sober Podcast. And today we are in, what is it, Cypress Park? or Cypress Park, technically, Cypress, yeah. Yeah, yeah. On Figueroa Street, inside the studio of Rashid Buhamidi. Correct, you got it right. <laughs> Very good pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you pronounce it? Just the way you said it. Yeah. <laughs> I say Buhamidi, or bu bu. It depending depending on where I am, actually, because it's an Arabic name, uh, and it uh, is pronounced. We don't pronounce the we don't pronounce the H in French, so it's Buamidi, uh, and the CH in French makes a sh sound. That's why it's spelled differently than you would see it ordinarily spelled. So well, it's Rashid Buamidi. We're and definitely going to get French, into, it. but yeah. it's not a French name. We're definitely going to get into all of this different like cultural history yeah. that we have. Um, <laughs> But uh, let, let's go back a little bit to when... Well, let's go back actually even further, because we, we met in like 2014, I think. Yeah, I remember, right? no, 20, so yeah 2014. Around yeah. that time. We'll get to that point. But I want to start where, where, um, where with you, like we always do on this podcast, we start with um, where were you born and, and where you grew up and right. kind of a punk-ass kid were you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. I'll tell you all about... I got, I got, I got the whole story. Uh, I, I carry it with Wait, me. Wait, real quick. Yes. I apologize for the sound that's coming from outside. We're right next to a car wash and their compressors are going on, so hopefully it's not that bad in here, but, you know, <laughs> we're going to live with it. Let's go for yeah, it. Yeah, I live with it. Uh, so I uh, uh, I was born in, in Palm Springs, California, 1981. Uh, my parents are both immigrants from uh, from France and Morocco, um, and I grew up. You know, I grew up primarily in the San Fernando Valley uh, in a town called Arlita, uh, which is close enough to Pacoima that we, as kids, when we were kids, we, we would somehow you, you would know, claim Pacoima. We would claim Pacoima <laughs> because those are street gangs were Pacoima yeah, yeah. based. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Pacas and uh, all these other guys, and and it's. It's very, it's true that, yeah, yeah. that, uh, uh, and, um, so I kind of went back and forth from the Coachella Valley and the San Fernando Valley wow. as a kid. Yeah. You just um, wanted to be in hot places. Yeah. Hot places, hot places. Yeah. Hot in, in, in more sense, <laughs> sense than one. Uh, yeah. I mean, the story of my, you kind of like, you know, I'm the, the last of five kids, mm -hmm. and I'm um, the only one that was born in the United States. Uh, all oh, my, you're the anchor brothers. baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was the one that would complain when I was a child that I didn't have a cool, you know, uh, permanent residency green card, you know? <laughs> I didn't get. The, I did. I was left out of that. Whatever yeah, that of was. Of course. I didn't, anything. Lucky you. Anything was worth being a part of if I was being left out of it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, um, but uh, so my the kind of a, a central thing in and and what I usually bring up when we talk about my family is, um, yeah, uh, my parents would kind of had a pretty easy immigration to the United States. Mm. They had a host in, mm. in, the, in 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 that my my uncle had uh, my uncle Pierre, my French uncle, my my mother's brother. Um, of course, your French uncle's name is Pierre. Yeah, his name is <laughs> Pierre Dupont. Pierre Dupont. It was it was an, he was wow, a character. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So Pierre Pierre was born in the thirties, and uh, and so he had li was around when a ch when he was a child. He had a. You know, he was a child of World War Two. You know, my grandfather was a resistance fighter and uh, was you know a prisoner of war and Nazi prisoner of war uh, concentration camps, and so he had lived through all this sort of stuff. And my his father, my grandfather, was born in the eighteen nineties. Was a veteran of the First World War, mm. and uh, as well. So uh, by the time my uncle was of a certain age, he was old enough to be conscript. Uh, uh, what's the word conscripted into the, the French army to fight in Algeria, which was a, a nasty war of independence for from Algeria. It was a nasty war, very for complicated, very complex reasons. My grandfather, my uncle's uh, 
refused to my, uh, refused to let his only son fight in a war for a colony they didn't know the French didn't even know they they still wanted and uh, and and so um, yeah he he kind of ducked out of uh, the story I, I've heard was that he he sort of a kind of avoided the draft and he was uh, was actually sent to Germany of all places for a mm. time and then eventually went to Portugal and traveled to Morocco mm. and uh, and he got into re- uh, he was a chef he got into a, a, he was a restaurateur and and he was going into o- hotellerie uh, what do you call it like hotel management and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that sort of thing <clears throat> and um, and eventually he came to the United States and he's like He's important in our family for a lot of reasons, but namely that he established the Dupar and Buhamidi family in mm. in in the U.S. in the nineteen early nineteen sixties, and he moved to San Francisco and opened uh, a French bistro and the first Moroccan restaurant in the West Coast of the United wow. States. Yeah, is that the one in San Francisco. That was in San Francisco, not this the was one originally. Yeah. Okay. So so what happened was the story of the family. I'll, I'll try to do this as quickly as I can because I can go on a while. It's just about that, but. Um, yeah, my mother had a, eventually, my mother was uh, a teacher, a school teacher, and teaching physics and chemistry and she, and mathematics. And Where'd your mom come from? Though? Well, my mother's from, my uh, mother's side of the family is from uh, southwestern France mm. in the town of Bordeaux. Mm. It was actually just a suburb of Bordeaux, okay. just walking distance away uh, in a town called Flarac. Mm-hmm. And Bordeaux is a part of uh, uh, the region of uh, Aquitaine. Mm-hmm. It was a part of France that was a possession of England for okay. because the wine was good and they didn't <laughs> want to let it go. <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, my mother uh, went to Fran- uh, to Morocco at one point, and eventually, uh, you know, had a kid with another guy. But all those whole all the story. She's turning eighty <laughs> years old, for, uh, by the way. So I have a lot of a lot of stories of, of her on my mind. So I eventually met my father, and uh, you know, they had kids. And um, at some point, my uncle and. and Concurrently with events going on in Morocco, my uncle had moved to Los Angeles uh, with his second wife and opened a Moroccan restaurant here mm-hmm. in 1974. And that uh, was a you know very successful. It was called, was called Dharma Greb, and it was a very popular restaurant. And if, um, on Sunset Boulevard, if you were a theater actor and if you bought books at Samuel French, yeah, <laughs> it's the restaurant that was right next door. There. I can't right next door to Samuel French Bookstore, which was an amazing bookstore that doesn't exist anymore. I know. Sad. And yeah. I live in the neighborhood, and I everything is gone. It's just, yeah. just, just uh, uh, that's a whole other story. But uh, the restaurant was really terrific, and it was like really pop and like all the actors, celebrities yeah. of all kinds. It, it was beautiful. It was a gorgeous building, yeah. And, 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 and my uncle had designed down to inside more than outside. I mean, the inside yeah, was, uh, outside was kind of like nondescript yeah you know, it was just a white building something that small accents of well yeah there was a gigantic brass door yeah. with all this alige tiling and carved yeah. you know so that it that that kind of gave away that there's something yeah. other interesting than the going door on it was inside. just white yeah it's white pristine Pris- yeah. yeah pristine white with the writing and down my grab which means moroccan house in uh. arabic and and uh when you go inside it looks like a, it's a moroccan palace it's a yeah. downscale version you know, down to every detail yeah. of the tiling of the plaster work yeah. there's a central courtyard I, I did get to go in there open. before I met you and I do remember the oh. tiles and I do remember oh. there was like a place that like where the sun came through that's like, right yeah it would rain yeah. into the fountain below when Beautiful. it was raining. Yeah, it was tile it was, everywhere it was so significant in a way uh, in part because all, I mean like I said it was a huge success when it opened especially in, in the 70s and 80s but it was a huge success and you know, I obviously made a lot of money for my aunt and uncle, and they, they were able to buy properties, and you know, they did well for themselves with this restaurant. But it was at one point considered official representation of Morocco in the oh, United really? States <laughs> wow. by the Moroccan government. Wow! And this is this is a story I've heard, but I I I I've I've. 
I've uh, I've heard it more than once, so I assume that it's true. But my uncle was invited to come to see, uh, to come to meet the king, or to be a, a you know, mm. a, a, you know, a guest, of a the guest, king, yeah. a, a official state guest, nice. uh, and he didn't go. <laughs> uh, this is this is this is like you know, in the nineteen seventies, it so, would be like Jack Nicholson. Yeah, what just, year were you born? At Academy Award. Well, here, uh, I, I went on a tangent. Quick, what year were you I'm, born? I'm leading up to the nineteen eighty one, nineteen eighty one. So then. By that time, you were born into royalty almost. <laughs> well, sort of. I mean, nobody. Yeah, really, it's like, not like they're household names. No, of course, but, but you're was, like um, you're. Well, it's interesting. We'll get to yeah. that because I I am of of on my father's side. I'm technically yeah, yeah. of noble birth. Okay, I okay, have a okay. title and all yeah, that yeah. because my father is of an Alawit. They're mm. they're a, a, the royal tribe that. Okay. Uh, is uh, the ruling what is it called dynasty again? Alu Aluit. Aluit. Uh, uh, Aluit. Okay. Which is uh uh which which means that my I am a distant, distant descendant of the the union of Fatima I mean I'm sorry, yeah, Fatima and um and Ali, uh who is the who is the, the father in law of the Prophet Muhammad. Mm. <laughs> so it goes way, way, way back to the seventh century. Mm. Uh uh, it's, it's where uh, the Alawites claim descendants from the uh, from yeah. Fatima and Ali, and the, who had a, two kids named Hassan and Hussein, and they established different caliphates. And there was a whole lot of crazy history and schisms and things. But like even that. without that, oh, yeah, just being right. born in Hollywood in oh, 1981. Yeah. Hollywood, yeah, <laughs> right, right. You're still right. like, well, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm going, I'm going on, uh, on a tangent yeah. there. What I, what the, the whole point of bringing this up was this is a kind of background yeah, on yeah. which my, my family found yeah. themselves living in the, in, yeah, in yeah. the United States and so completely, you know, going from a, a very foreign culture yeah. and ending up in the United, United States. Well, my uncle had that successful Moroccan restaurant, and he had decided uh, by 19, at some point in the, the mid 70s, late 70s, that he would open a second restaurant. This time in the, in the Coachella Valley, in the town of Rancho Mirage, and uh, and my grandfather uh, Rene Dupar, he had just passed away, I think, in 1978. And um, my mother has no other siblings, you know. So my uncle in Los Angeles was her closest contact mm. with her family after that. Her, both her parents were gone. So my uh, uncle had asked my father to come to the United States and help run a second Dharma grab mm. uh, to manage the restaurant in uh, Rancho Mirage. So... Uh, my brothers and my sister, my uh, sister was just adopted in 1980. Um, so we have a pretty big family uh, f for very mixed provenance, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, m uh, my f uh, parents moved in 19, my family moved in 1980. And then a year later, I was born. I was the last one. I was like an accident, but yeah, you know, whatever. I was an accident. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. I don't. <laughs> Even, you know, it's just and I'm what it still is. an accident. You can't, you, I, I'm still making accidents. No, that's a story of my life. No, um, no. So, so all yeah. right. So, where did you grow up? Now, 1981. You're a kid. Where most of your time yeah, is in Oklahoma. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like a oh. good and very important formative experience yeah. of living in the valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it, and it affected the way I, my my behavior and my attitudes when I when I eventually moved back to the desert. So, yeah. what happened? There was a just. It's a complicated family thing. There was a dispute with my uncle and my father, and my father said, uh, "Ended up moving to the, uh, moving to the desert and working for my uncle at the, the, the Hollywood Dharma Grab, mm. and uh, they eventually found a house in in the you know kind of quiet working class neighborhood in San Fernando Valley in Arlita, off of Van Nuys and uh, Beachy Avenue." And uh, we lived there from 1983. You know, obviously my oldest brother is seven years old, so he was, and and I'm the youngest. I was, I think it was two or three when I let, when we ended up in. in let's in get LA. a few stories of like Rashid in elementary yeah. school. Oh yeah, so it's interesting. And, and did you yeah. start painting in elementary school? Oh yeah, painting. You well, you know, my mother says that I I started drawing the the moment that I could hold a pencil in my hand. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so that was. 
uh, that's probably accurate. And there's I already a lot of art in your family, family, I imagine. Yeah, well, sort of. You know, my, my father was actually a writer, you know, before yeah. he, his interests were, he was an agricultural technician, like a farmer, mm. and he was, uh, and had developed some very advanced things in, in, in agri- some, some sort of thing he did uh, with his brothers, but he was really, at, at, at heart, a writer and a poet. Mm. And it's what he wanted to pursue more than anything, uh, although he was kind of the jack of all trades. He did everything. Uh, but uh, my brothers, yeah, yeah, going, yeah, for the 1980s and 90s, uh, you know, my oldest brother, this is at a time when L.A. was a corrupting, you know, have a good memory of it. <coughs> my brother was into doing graffiti art. Mm-hmm. My oldest brother. Oh, that's right. You're always a brother. lawyer now. Was, He's a rapper was, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have a yeah. I have another. I have like <laughs> I said. I have four one. four siblings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But my oldest brother was uh, was in a graffiti crew. Mm. It was at USC, I think it was okay. called Unstoppable Criminals. They yeah, all have like yeah, yeah. this, like you know, yeah, yeah. and they would wear Trojan uh, USC <laughs> uh, hats in or whatever. Eighty nine, I was in one called Unknown Artists and another one called Criminal and Criminals in Effect. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this was all. We had those like, kind of names yeah, back I mean, then. I mean, I remember like vaguely, you know, oh, Chaka yeah. was like, yeah, you know, yeah. it was like, we didn't have these art star graffiti artists. Yeah, yeah, we it had, was, it was a whole different scene. Like and real was, street artists. It's real street artists, like really working even, uh, and you could clarify the role of gangs and in, in the, the kind of the alliance or mm. the, that, that happened. Obviously, you couldn't just tag up any spot anywhere in yeah. L.A. You had to, you had to be cool, like enough to, to, to do it you know you had to be all right uh but but that was kind of a little over my head you know we're i was just a little kid you know i yeah. I, I was an easy kid when it came to things because i just like to paint i like to draw a lot uh painting came later you know and we can talk about that um so we're, you know, we're I, now when you were Tiffany a kid when you were a kid from, and you started drawing and you started yeah yeah, yeah and you went to so elementary like I school was, i Tell was some i was i was drawing comic books uh i was i was into collecting just comic books and drawing uh, the, uh, i i couldn't tell i think my er, one of the earliest influences that i can remember is children's illustrations yeah. in the books that we had we had tons of books at home but it had no money we just had a lot of books <laughs> uh, <laughs> and 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 you know like i have uh, so many siblings and they were all doing sports you know and i never did an organized any kind of sport yeah. and i don't think you, there's anything organized about you <laughs> well, <laughs> well, there's a there's some kind of or order somewhere yeah, yeah. Uh, I couldn't. I, I couldn't don't mean that as an insult. <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, that's all right. Yeah. Uh, but you know, like as far as uh, you know, we, we, I was a kind of a scrappy street kid. You know, I was actually known in my neighborhood as a kid that didn't like to wear shoes. Mm. That was a fucking thing that I had when I was a kid. As I, I went, I, as soon as yeah. I got out of school, and we went to, we didn't go to an American school, yeah. which may have been a source of some resentment with some of the kids in my neighborhood. Mm. So we didn't go to school with them. Mm. We went to a French lycée in LA mm. uh, called uh, uh, Lycée International de Los Angeles, the Lila, it's a international lycée that we all went to school at. And when we came came back, I threw my shoes off, and I was out on the street, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm kind of. I'm very much the same way, I guess, uh, a little bit feral <laughs> when it comes yeah. to, you know, like, uh, I'll knock in the door. You were in 1981. Yeah, 1981. Man, those were good years, and you were a baby, so. I was a little kid, yeah. yeah. There was a lot going on. I, I mean, you know, uh, so, yeah, it was it was a, it was was an interesting time, like, to grow up in, in, in you know, that well, part I, of San Fernando Valley was, was, was mainly Chicano, Mexican-American, yeah, yeah. you know? And uh, and so a lot of our friends, obviously everybody we knew in school were Mexican mm. uh, kids from different different backgrounds. Some of them grew up in and born and raised in 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 uh, in San Fernando in the San, San Fernando Valley. Some of the kids were like the children of gangbangers that were that that not, that became nominally a part of the gang yeah, at, yeah, uh, yeah. later on in life. But uh, eventually, our family decided that it wasn't a very safe place to go because there were drive-by shootings and things, crazy things like that on our cul-de-sac. Some guy showed up with a machine gun and started shooting down our neighbors Damn. because a neighbor was involved in, in yeah, drugs. Yeah. And it just good people like the fucking the best, you yeah. know, that they, they bought a house for their mother and, and all of their extended family. Mm. But they were involved in kind of like less than, you know, legal things and there's some shady stuff going on. And at the same time, my brother, my oldest brother was like 
My oldest brother, I remember him as a brawler. You know, he's physically a little bit built differently. He's mm. he's at my half brother, my oldest brother mm. Renee. Uh, you know, this guy used to to get into trouble. Well, we all got into some kind of yeah, trouble, yeah. you know, because we lived in the streets back then. Okay. Yeah, we lived in this. We were latchkey kids, you know. Same we thing, like you say, you'd, you'd come home from out. school and just. It was a lot less like like you know. It wasn't very ordered, you know. Yeah. My parents are very open about certain things, and obviously, I mean, obviously, obviously. Being being in a big family, you, you, we look after each other. And we're expected to, yeah. to, to 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 have a certain degree of, I guess, family solidarity. I don't know. We do, like we do things for one another. And we say it. Say it. Other. Say it. La familia. La familia. <laughs> we, we had to be. We had to be. We we're I, a family. Bohemian versus the Reyes Ramirez, and we would play football on the street, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we would play oh, rough, two hand yeah, touch, where we yeah. fall to the ground, and we end up. Blood, and I would. I, w- I was actually good at those sports yeah. because I had to play them when I was kids because yeah. it was family versus family on our co- on our street. Uh, this is b- before 1993. Um, I want to get back a little bit into uh, like you drawing as a kid. Yeah. And, and like, did you have any early inspiration? Oh, yeah. Did you have any early yeah. like... Because I've, I've never known you not to be working on something. Like every yeah. time I see you, you're carrying something, you're drawing I'll something. Always drawing. You, you have ten I minutes, to, you're drawing something. The same drawing for other people. Yeah. Like girls, always, I have yeah. crushers on. I, I was doing that when I was six years old. <laughs> oh I was wow! Drawing, cool. I was drawing somebody I liked. I said, "This is for yeah, you." This yeah. is like, it's. It hasn't changed all that much. Yeah. Uh, it's I basically doing the same thing I've been doing. So your love long. language is art. Yeah, it's like the. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's the thing I'm, I'm probably closest to. I mean, things come and go, and I'm always yeah, still course. doing the same thing. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'll talk about them in terms of, like, I think, like, moments in my life that were epiphanal in the yeah. sense of, like, they were revelations in my, my life. Yeah. Something really, just, really caught me. Well, when I was six, I remember, I was just thinking about this. Uh, there was this kid named C- Cédric. He was a French kid. And, and oh, all the Cédric. girls liked him. I remember I had a little bit of resentment from because all the girls liked him. And they didn't really like me because I was dirty. And But I remember his <laughs> mother. I was dirty. I was just like a scrappy, like. Yeah, you didn't care. I, yeah. I was picking my nose all day. I didn't yeah, even yeah. realize it. You know, I'm like, I don't know. For whatever reason, I wasn't the darling of my yeah, yeah. Of my fifth, first grade or kindergarten, but I remember something that I uh, I was just so fucking inspired by this, and it's such a simple thing. But Cedric's mother, I think, was a cartoonist. It was mm. one of the things she did, or I don't know what. But she showed up to her kindergarten, or it was a first grade. And this is, uh, and she uh, she drew a, a Père Noël, uh, which is uh, Father Christmas, uh, Santa Claus. She drew a Santa Claus with chalk on a chalkboard hmm. and i saw her do it and it just the, the volume and the face the character and it just it just blew my mind i still remember it like the amount just, of life that she brought out of, out lines, of nothing out of lines, and she yeah. did it on purpose she knew that we would just be <laughs> stunned you know yeah. but um one of those things where like oh i do that i i you know i've mm. I always felt close it was your, had a lot of your chance to shine yeah yeah you know there was always something like you, you know it's indirectly i was in, yeah. around a lot of art my uncle collected a lot of mesoamerican african mm. and european paintings wow. and and a lot of different things so we saw this stuff a lot uh and 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 what would be considered lowbrow stuff like comics and things like that that was a, a, a thing i was really popular I, I i can't remember i have heard stories from friends that i've still reconnected with over the years that say i remember when you were seven or eight and you drew this tree mm. and i couldn't fucking believe you how good that drawing was mm. and i'm like I, well i wish i could like you know kind of look <laughs> back at some of those things because i have very little that that's left but apparently i could draw really well when i was when i was when i was so really little what happened with cedric's mom I don't know. I, I oh, was he wasn't even moment. there. I just remember that moment. You know that that was the. Uh, you, you know, mean just a moment where you recognize what art? I'm can surprised do I remember his name. because you know? <laughs> this was a very long time ago. I just. But what I'm just, trying to figure out is what did it do to you? Was it that you learned what art can do, or was it? Yeah, that, you, that it was like this powerful vehicle of expression mm. you know that and it was something that i was in. so i was obsessed with the bernstein bears when i was six and and i was obs- i was obsessed and i was kind of tyrannical when it came to like 
what I was doing. I, I remember my mom recalls a time when I was five or six and I was trying to draw the Berenstein Bears exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I, and I was obsessive. I mean, this is like, this is at a time when I didn't know I didn't know about science and things like that, and I mm. thought I could make a chocolate egg out of a out of a real <laughs> egg, you know. And he tried alchemy. Alchemy was a, something that I would do, you mm. know, when I was a child, like of a sort. Mm. Was always trying to create something from some base material, mm. and what I wanted uh, as an artist when I was a little little kid was to to, to to try my to try to draw like as well as the people I admired. So mm. I remember the Berenstein Bears, and I one time I had uh, I had asked my mother to uh, forced her to go to the store to buy tracing paper so I could draw it exactly right. And she's never forgotten it. It was just mm. one one of, of of probably many incidents. Uh, but I mean, I, I guess I think I was pretty easy in in some sense because, like you know. I like books. I read a lot when I was a kid. We had a lot of books around. You know, my mother always supplied us with things, and we had a library. Mm. Of my mom was a, a is a bibliophile. So was my grandmother. So we had a lot of books and and uh, an obsession with drawing. But uh, and then everything else was not so important. You know, mm. oh, and I, I didn't need to take. I didn't need to play hockey or something like that or get all that gear and, and be a part of a team it wasn't it wasn't something you know sports are fine but it's not my passion yeah, yeah. you know so i think in a lot of different periods of my life there are incidents like that really transformative experiences mm -hmm. like you know comic books was like a big thing for me when i um you know after the la riots uh that was uh, a thing that my parents decided that uh, it was a straw that I think it was a straw that broke the camel's back for my father mm -hmm. about ha having us in L.A. at a time. Uh, there were financial problems as well, but he moved us back to Palm Desert, mm -hmm. which I left for the first time. I went to an American public school. Wow, with you were like hundreds of people in my 12? class. When I was wow. when I went to Lila, the, the, the French school I went to had mm -hmm. twelve people in the whole class. Wow. That was us. We knew each other by name. We knew everything about each other. We helped each other out. Our families helped each other out mm -hmm. to do to, to carpooling. Yeah. Lila came up in the world. Like the, 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 there are two lycées, the two mm -hmm. French uh, international schools. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was a little bit more posher than the other. But when we were kids, Lila was like really like, it was pretty scrappy, you know? Like we just pulled our resources together. You know that the teachers were doing overtime and doing things that were yeah. they weren't getting paid for. Well, we went to the school and we were able to go to school because we, we applied for, uh, because as French, as dual citizens of France, we, we were eligible for a, a waiver in the yeah, tuition. Yeah. And so we were able to go to school. But uh, I, the major, obviously a major, change for me was coming to the desert from LA after like the LA riot yeah. we were all like a little bit hardened yeah. and, and I was especially because I I think you know we were exposed to to, to a kind Some of level serious of serious stuff. shit yeah. serious shit and then we moved to the desert which was which was really uh <laughs> for the most part it's like affluent of you know and yeah and uh there's a lot of retired the culture is completely different and and it was very weird like i never i couldn't i remember when i uh the first time i did the pledge of allegiance in school wow. this was in seventh grade and I couldn't believe we had to do that every day. Mm. I didn't know the words. I didn't even understand what was, I was just kind of like being like sluiced around, you know, school and like meeting all these people. And I, I it was a kind of a shocking experience. And the, the level of like, you know, you know, being in school, the level of like kind of conformity, like everybody had to dress like the skater thing was really popular. Mm, and I like the clicks, all, the clicks was like yeah. we didn't have that because we didn't have a big enough a school for that, you know. And and plus, we're we're an international school. So it was kids from Africa, Polynesia, France, Canada and the United States. And, yeah. and we all knew each other here. There were hundreds of people and you weren't expected to be close to 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 your teachers or anything like that. Well, so the so that was a big change. And I think for me, when um, you know, it was always always still drawing was the anchor for me. And 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 I I I want to give credit right away for whoever it was that introduced me to the junior high school and high school art classes that I 
took. We had really, really, some really great teachers that introduced me to a lot of ideas and um, things that were beyond the scope of like, you know, you know I'm going to be a comic, English and math. comic book. You know, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. just in the arts, like yeah. to learn about Andy Warhol when I was in seventh grade and things yeah. like that. And just doing painting. Just to learn that art things, had a lot of collage. depth to it besides just the lines in the comic books. To yeah. learn that there was, it was like, so It was so crucial, though. Drawing yeah. was so like, I have my, my good friend Alex Bernardi. I'm still good friends with him, but we were buddies since seventh grade. And he, he doesn't, he, he, he remembers the, th- the lectures I gave mm-hmm. about art. When we were little kids, you know, he would say things, things that I would, I wouldn't say myself anymore, but I, but, but at the time seemed like pure wisdom. And I would say, well, there's no such thing as a line. It's just a concentrated shadow and things. I don't even remember these things, but he remi- he reminds me that there were, those were really important, uh, guiding, uh, mm. things in, 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 uh, in our lives. So, so little by little, I was introduced to more, uh, possibilities in our um i i was living in palm desert and um i wanted to go to just immerse myself in being an, an artist you know mm. what, what that meant change and over the years you're but just I in wanted, high school now right this yeah point. junior high high school junior like high school. Uh, and i wanted to go to school after eighth grade i wanted to go to loxa the LA oh. County, I had heard about the school, mm. and I thought, well, wouldn't it be great if I I'd be close to my so my dad was kind of living apart from us because mm. he was he was running the you know all all this sort of stuff, and I thought, wouldn't it be great to spend to to be in LA you know mm. to go to school in LA, and uh, you know I think my parents hid it for me, but like I didn't get in, mm. and in part because of the uh, probably if I was more interested if I was more interested in other things in comic books at that point, I I, I may have had a chance where I don't know what the circumstances were. Just to say your portfolio wasn't well, my well, portfolio well. wasn't broad enough, yeah. I guess, for for them. Not that it wasn't good. Uh, I could draw like as pretty much as good as uh, yeah. to, to my memory, uh, almost as good as Dan Lee and or what uh, uh, Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane. Those yeah. are like you know image comics. Those was a model of art for me for mm. a while. Uh, that's what I wanted to do when I was in seventh and eighth grade was become a comic mm. book artist. And uh, when uh, I I in high school, my my brother had gone to high school there for a time, and she uh, introduced me to this wonderful lady that was the art advanced. Advanced placement, art, advanced art teacher. Her name was uh, Judith Munson, and she was a very, very, uh, very. Uh, uh, she, she was a mentor. You know, she was a, just this. this uh, she actually, w- under her tutelage, in a way, like, uh, I mean, it, it seemed at a certain point, it seemed like, you know, she was aware and I was aware that there was a limit to what I could learn in art, in, in high school art. Mm-hmm. So she encouraged me to study in college when I was already in high school. When I was in high school, she she put me in exhibitions at, at the, wow. the Palm Springs Art Museum. She she, she really helped me out. Mm-hmm. She had a lot of faith in, in my ability. And I was told later on, years later, that she left the school. She retired because there were nobody as motivated as, like, I was. Like, the, I was the last really? of her students <laughs> that was really that motivated. Somebody said that yeah. to me. I don't know if that's an exaggeration, but, I mean, that was something that really made an impression on me to hear. You're, um, you're definitely motivated. <laughs> I yeah, mean, motivated. Yeah, I, I, still, I still, like, like there are a lot of things that motivated me. I think the major thing for me that happened when I was in high school was I got to go st- to Pomona College, yeah. so um, for it was a it was an outing by. Uh, uh, oh, you got to go to the Pomona College. Pomona College art. to visit to art the, the gallery. Art. Yeah, the collection yeah, is amazing. A yeah, collection of etchings by Goya. Yes, by Francisco Goya. I've seen that, and and you know I didn't really know Goya very well when I was fourteen. Uh, you know, my mother was from Bordeaux, where he's from. My mother's a, a, a treasure trove of hidden information, you know. Mm-hmm. I just want to say that as an aside. I mean, she, she liked to say expressions that only, you know, that are brilliant, you know. Mm-hmm. And only French people say them, mm-hmm. you know. Like, c'est mon violon d'angle. That's my hobby. That's a way you say, Ang's violin. That, that's another way of saying my mm-hmm. hobby. She used to say that for years. I didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> and... It turns out Ang, Jean-Gus Dominique Ang, mm. who's one of the greatest draftsmen, 
drawers uh, uh, of, in history of Western uh, drawing, was a fantastic violinist, but he considered it a, his hobby. Mm. Uh, so you he say, an and his violin is another way of saying that's my hobby. And she would no say, big she deal. Would, it's just my. No, it's just my hobby. My I'm like, hobby. mom, why do you knit all the time? Why are you sewing or knitting? And oh, hey. some of your own thing. <laughs> my <laughs> my violin. I was like, I don't know what that means, but okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so uh, yeah, Go seeing the Goya show was really like. I want to be now that yeah. a whole other level of what it means. I think to be that honest. also connected you like, to like could, family and history. Gave you like a, a deep. Right connection. Yeah, or something. yeah. It, it, like I said, a, a lot of a lot of either nurturing is kind of, you know, it's not like my, my, it, it happened naturally. It's like yeah. like you know so much, but you don't necessarily share everything. Like it's like oh, I must teach my kids all these things. It just kind of comes out. And in fact, that like you know, my family was so big. All of a sudden, uh, um, by the time I was I was born, that they couldn't exactly like. It's not like an engineered uh, upbringing, you know, where, yeah. where somebody is, or you know what I'm saying, like kids that 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 grew up in a family where where they make sure you. Yeah. Uh, there was some of that to some extent, but I mean, it wasn't you were the like, youngest. Oh, he has to be very cultured and yeah. all this sort of stuff. That 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 happened uh, as a matter of just. Whatever. You were the youngest. They were extremely busy. And very busy. You were very busy. You had older and I was brothers, interested yeah. in everything. You know, yeah. uh, I I learn. I know probably more than most people about my my family's history because I asked the questions yep. you know when people were around when when uh, Nanette came Nanette was uh, a friend of my grandfather was a French resistance fighter came uh, a member of the French resistance she came to you know and and I have questions and I ask and I ask and I ask and then uh, uh, and you know so, so the uh, I just asking a lot and, and being curious you know was was really important you know in in, 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 in how I learn about things yeah. and wanting to know more and having books you know helped <laughs> let's move into um how you then ended up um, heading to Boston for oh yeah this undergrad. is like a job no no I went yeah. to I went to SAIC as an in undergrad okay. I went to I did it backwards Art Institute of Chicago yeah Art yeah, Institute of so, Chicago as an undergrad so yeah I mean I went through high school and you know the uh, continued on uh, I started taking classes in a community college and uh, you know my my teacher in high school was like you know here art can she let me borrow a book called Art since the nineteen forties. And this opened up, mm. this is in 1996 or something like that when I was 15. And this opened up a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I, I was learning about, about uh, in, uh, I was learning about, you know, some of the most notable uh, artists, Bill de Kooning, the abstract expressionism, uh, minimals, and all these, all these obscure, th seemingly obscure things for kids. But by the time I was ready to go to high school, I knew, uh, uh, I was thinking about, oh, do I go to UCLA and study with Chris Burden, you know? <laughs> Even though he's a polar opposite yeah. of what I do, it was like, uh, you but know, he was, was so interesting. Yeah, he was yeah. so interesting to me. Like, and, and he was a person of interest, you know. Uh, Paul McCartney, we knew who these artists were. We were like, kind of prime, even though, uh, I mean, I was not a conceptual artist by, and still I'm not really in any, uh, in any normal sense. Uh, uh, um, but, you know, yeah, when I, by the time, so, I mean, there's a, a, lot, a few things that led up to, to, to that I mean I uh, to going to school in Chicago like I had been able to go with the money I made from uh, a mural commission a commission that I did my own money you know I went to New York and New York for the first time in, in when I was 17 and real quick though I really want to mention that mural yeah. because that's the mural that you did in in Palm Springs right no 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 I'm thinking of a, a oh, what okay. I just brought up was actually a uh uh, it was it was a Titanic. It was a it was a backdrop for the Titanic. Uh, I have to give a shout out to those people in high school that really looked out for me. You know, yeah. they're like, hey, you know, by the time I was seventeen, I was in a gallery, yeah. and 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 and, and um, by the time I was in my last year in high school, it was kids that went to school with me knew that I was fanatically drawing and painting and mm. doing things, you know, uh, making art. And they introduced me to people that I wouldn't ordinarily know. Wow. And so uh, this wonderful uh, guy is an artist. He opened a gallery in Palm Springs. A guy named Fred, uh, Brett Philpott uh, was introduced to him by a student 
of mine who was friends, whose brother, older brother, knew him, and showed my work, the work I did when I was 16, 17. And he thought it was profound and, and really deep and like mature for somebody my age, mm. you know. So he he took me into his gallery. So by, by when I was 17, I had a, a gallery. Technically, I was represented by this gallery in Palm Springs. And I was doing, you know, I was in student shows in, in the museum there. And mm. uh, but um, so I was, I was kind of doing it. I had it boosted my self esteem. I, I think you know, I, I was also uh, involved in in certain, you know, uh, kind of have a, a life, uh, you know, uh, interest in politics, and I, I had a very, very, very complicated kind of. Um, coming of age or something like that you know but I was always painting and making art and that was the thing I said you know no matter what I'm doing I'm going to hold on to this mm. so uh, eventually I went to Chicago yeah I went to uh, I, I thought to myself, I got a taste of like, I went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York <laughs> and I saw those paintings for the first time. And I, I was just in tears when I saw a wow. Courbet painting. When I was a kid, I didn't even know he was a famous artist. I had a mm. book, a Courbet book, and I would take it to the hills. Walk, I lived up in the Kauai Hills. I would take it on uh, walks mm. with me because I wanted to be close to Mm. to what he was close to you know mm. he, he was a realist and one of the greatest painters ever lived and he's still one of my favorite painters and the the feeling um the the, the feeling for the natural world is, is so palpable in that work when i finally saw his work i just couldn't even fucking believe it you know mm. and, and they're so physical and and it made a huge impression on me to go to the metropolitan museum of art wow. i didn't i i couldn't even believe that they were real <laughs> no i thought i thought the museum wouldn't let us see a toulouse low truck up close you know what i mean <laughs> like because when i was in high school we didn't really see that much art you know mm. up close yeah. so i had modigliani and picasso i mean it was born with the shadow of picasso you know mm. uh, 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 and then he's another guy I'm not going to talk about but he's very important in the, my formative experiences as an artist he's one of many uh, important artists uh, uh, but uh, you know uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't believe like that, that I, it, it struck me you know that this was a work an actual yeah. thing that they made a yeah. Van Gogh painting yeah. you know we take it for granted I mean we're so used to looking at art I mean, yeah. you know, like, wow that is like <laughs> You know, you and the world, like the, a, a mediator between you and and something. And painting still is just so powerful to me. It it's moving to me, and it's powerful. And that's and it's just one of the things. Just being being in having that contact with the history of art in that way. And that's why I moved to Chicago because we had a museum in our school. Mm. Museum, a fantastic museum. I, I'm anxious. I haven't been uh, back to Chicago since I graduated in 2006. I went there for a year. It was sort of miserable. I mean, I had a girlfriend, so that, you know, kind of uh, ameliorated the situation a bit, but I was a little bit miserable, and it was very expensive. So I I took the best classes I can. I, I, I sought out the best teachers, you know, that I could study with to learn from, mm. whatever I could, whatever they could give me. And I said, fuck it, I'm going, I'm, I've got, I got to, like, I got, I'm ready. I've got the motivation and I'm, and I got some good things. So I thought, yeah. and I'm going to leave this art school. Yeah. And I ended up going to community college and then, uh, wait, 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 you were in Chicago and you left it. Yeah, I left. I didn't go my all four. I only went there. I went there for two and a half years total. Huh. Yeah. So I went there for my first year, kind of had enough of it and left for five years. And I was, I was working in the community, community Ooh. college t and, and what community tutoring. college you go to? College of the Desert. Here, back Palm here? Desert, California, yeah. So this what before we moved back to LA. The move? Like what motivated you? Uh, what motivated you to leave the college? Um, well, there was a, a series of kind of unfortunate things. Uh, I had a nervous breakdown in 2002 that was the beginning of, of some Ooh. serious mental health issues that Ooh. I still have, um, where I was piling on a lot of a lot of uh this is when i was 20 21 years old it's probably not a lot yeah. uh, i i was thinking to myself i might just make paintings for fun yeah. and study sociology 
and or, or, or I was studying everything. You know, I was preparing to go to UCLA mm -hmm. as a transfer. So, so I was getting into like advanced mathematics, algebra, then calculus. You know, trigonometry. Yeah. Interested in, yeah. like I said, I'm interested in everything. You know, <laughs> uh, I might not be like suitable suitable to be an engineer, and I never yeah. took physics. But like, but you like to learn everything. You like I to like know. the history of knowledge. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of things, uh, like uh, a, a lot of different kinds of things, uh, and. Um, um, and my mother was was good on that because she had a pretty has a broad base a base of knowledge. She can ask her a little bit about anything, you know. Uh, but uh, I uh, I ended up leaving. Uh, I ended up leaving. I ended up having a breakdown in two thousand two uh, when I was twenty one, and at the same time, our family moved out of Palm Desert, out of the desert, yeah. and into the back to North Hollywood, just to, back to L A. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for the next five years, I was um, traveling. I was going to community college, Alley Valley College, for a while. And then eventually, with some encouragement from my family, they said, okay, well, you know, you're really good at this. Like, you can go back to, to school. You can go shoot for the stars, you know. Like, if, that meant for me that I should try to become a teacher at some mm. point that actually that I would finish my undergraduate degree at, at SAIC, transfer all those credits from all the school mm. schooling I did before, finish up there, and then I can go to grad school and get the master's, and and then I can have a career as an, a professor and mm. do my painting, you know? That was the goal, you know? Uh, and so I, I graduated in 2006, and um, very, uh, applied to grad school really soon after Indiana University, Yale, which I didn't really care to, that I didn't get in, but I, uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of different schools, and I got into a n number of them, Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, then I applied to Boston University, who my, uh, one of my best friends, Joseph Cristofoletti, amazing muralist, he, uh, he, uh, he went there and he kind of, I was like, yeah, this seems like a cool school, you know, and John Walker is there. He's like a, a legend, you know, in, 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 uh, in, in art pedagogy and, and painting, you know. Mm. I thought, this is cool. Like, it's so collegiate too, Boston, <laughs> like fucking Harvard across the, the, the Charles River. Mm. And then you have all these other schools. Ah, like, we, yeah, 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 we had, we had so, there were so many colleges, I yeah. couldn't even name you half of them. Uh, but you're just around like this energy of learning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, you know it's it's interesting. It's like it's like you have to be motivated yourself. And 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 and, and I mean, I've been told by my teachers that I didn't, they didn't really teach me shit. They they, they were <laughs> I I taught myself anything uh, for the most part. Yeah. But what they they do is they point you. You know, they're good teachers in the sense that they don't try to shape you into them. Yeah. They 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 allow you to be yourself as an artist. But they point out certain things like, you know, my wonderful teacher I had in undergrad, uh, who I'm thankfully in, in contact with again because of social media, mm. uh, Dan Gustin. I was one of a few of, like really great teachers I had, uh, you know, uh, what the fuck was I going to say about it? Uh, yeah, he, um, he, he was... Um, I, I learned some some you know just the kind of, as a kind of discipline you know uh, his whole th his philosophy was really like it's not to teach you how to be an artist mm -hmm. but how to or as a painter how to orient your mind mm -hmm. and your hand how to paint what you see mm -hmm. you know like like he was a kind of like a perceptual painter mm -hmm. and that's very like kind of key to understand what happened in modernist art uh, what happened in art mm. you know to understand uh it it, it helps it helps under it help, uh, helps you clarify a little bit mm. uh, certain, certain things and it, 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 it helps motivate you uh it helped me motivate myself it gave me a kind of a somewhere a basis from which to start from like mm. to re to start over you know yeah. it's like a, a few things that you've said so far are like just the fact that like you love the history of knowledge so like when when you learn about something you want to know how it got there when you yeah when you um uh, you know these teachers told you some stuff and they tell you about the layers and and i see i've seen it since i first met you like in your work like an infinite number of layers that you always like you do always like you have something, then you go back and you go further back and you push things yeah. back, back, back. And by the time you're done with a painting, 
you have like literally an infinite number of layers that you can like peek through to try to see where something started yeah, or something yeah, came you from. Know, painting is I mean, so I'm trying to read into like. You're, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Like I always feel like like people say, oh, he's a maximalist. I, I'm a maximalist because there's so much shit going on in my painting. Mm. But that that's beside the point. Mm. What, 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 one, of, one of the things that's interesting about painting is that it's just so, it's just a flat surface, right? Mm. The picture plane is it's still magical because mm. you can make a mark and all of a sudden you read that spatially mm. you, you see a picture you know there's a recess there's mm. a window and there's a wall it has that di it has that dual nature you know mm. so like when you think about like what what you do as an artist in painting is like you have to lay it all out you know <laughs> you know what I mean I, 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 I that's not to say that everything can be in one painting but there's a uh, you know, like, it should really pack a punch. Mm. It should have this content loaded in it, within itself. Mm. And it should resonate, you know? Well, it should, like, you should walk away I mean, with something after you saw something. Just looking at you and the, the work behind you, like, it, it completely represents the way that I know you. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah? Know? Just, like, talking about this, talking about that, mm. going back forward, going back into this. It's like, yeah. there's, never, there's never a lack of... Um, topics for you <laughs> you know yeah. like you can always yeah. find I mean, something to I munch guess, on in I the discussion a, yeah, yeah yeah always always uh, i don't know about inspiration i mean, who who is a chuck closer one of the others uh i mean uh, david hockney says some great things about inspiration uh to the lazy he she comes not or something something or other yeah you know all about all about you know painting is is work. so much work yeah and then, and, and it's almost whether you're inspired or not, or you're even conscious of it or not, yeah. is is besides the point. You know, you know that you have to work every day yeah. to get to a, to get a something place. out. Yeah. But I do get really inspired by by uh, you know there. I have a lot of ideas that come to my head that have to do with uh, formal issues in painting. You know, like. Could that you can start still openings and painting. Painting is the oldest fucking thing in the world, you know. <laughs> Might as well be. I mean, we've been doing it since we were in the caves, right? Yeah. So it's very ancient, you know. Um, I think it was something I read uh, a year ago. On, uh, Noah Davis, this amazing mm -hmm. artist that passed away some years ago, he he said that um, in an exhibition at the Underground Museum, he said uh, there was some text of some and it said um painting is so old that it belongs in the realm of the spirits like so he was talking about spirituality and art I remember it makes that. you feel uncomfortable but that's where it is yeah it's so it's so deep and old you know it, it's it's with us it's a with us there's it's archetypal almost mm. you know uh uh, but I, I am inspired by, you know, I, I, there are a lot of things that motivate me to do one thing uh, or, or another, you know. Uh, 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 it's a, and it's some, sometimes it's perplexing to galleries and different people that why I would focus on one thing and then suddenly turn, get a, an about face. Mm -hmm. Because my interest is in the whole human experience mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Like, it, everything is fair, you know. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is find out how to, how to do that? How to talk about that? Mm -hmm. And that's the that's a, that's like really like the 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 incubation time as an artist is figuring out figure out how to fucking do that. How to really yeah you know tell your stories because you so, have all these thoughts in your head and how do you put them down for like to for somebody else to look at or yeah. for somebody else you to try to, to you have to try, do you out. try to make sense of what you're thinking for somebody else i mean do you try to make sense yeah, of, I mean, or do you I, just I like go that, like that, that some things are some things are clearer than others uh, yeah. uh than others uh, uh uh yeah i mean there are just like lots of different points of interest i don't know it's interesting like i mean when carrie james marshall came to my studio in grad school he was like you know so you have to write all this down. He was, he was, he was, he was a pretty, pretty vicious mm. as a. I mean, he's a wonderful. I mean, he's a, he's a genius and mm. one of the greatest painters alive. But he was actually very, very hard in a sense that I went to a grad school that that uh, that didn't 
that played down the thesis, that played down the, the conceptual angle. Right now we're working with colored mud. We're pushing it around on a canvas. We're trying to make pictures, mm. and we're trying to make sculptures, and we're trying to make these certain things. It is not. It can be counterproductive to try to say, "Well, this is all fitting into this 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 this." Hang on. If you have your ideas yeah. in a row, yeah. then pursue them. Yeah. If you have your quest, then your mission, whatever you want to call it, yeah, yeah. that guides you. Let that be your guide. And that's not necessarily one thing or another. You yeah, know? Yeah. For an artist like Harry James Marshall, it's like a lot of things, right? Because yeah. he's carrying this, this profound thing on his, you know, the, 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 yeah. you know uh, and we could talk about like the, what the color black yeah, yeah. You know, means yeah. to an artist that is talking about race, yeah. but it's also talking about painting. Yeah. And it's also talking about, it's a multidimensional yeah. uh, uh, artist, you know, it, it necessarily is, you know, it's metaphysical and it's, and it's multi-dimensional like so there are times when you when you do have like all these thoughts and you're going to shove them into a painting but once you start painting like yeah. you just go yeah i imagine like yeah. i'm not a painter yeah. it's a very very direct thing for me yeah. like it, it, it also depends it depends on and one of the things for me what i'm trying to do in, in a technical level with some of the paintings i'm doing now is that is that it, i have to really slow it down i have to say this is a first move <laughs> i can't of see slowing moves. down <laughs> i know not not that i slow it down but it needs drawing time that it needs that, that okay that, yeah. you know what i mean so like you're literally forced physically, to slow down i'm forced to because yeah, i say yeah. this is because it's layer in such a yeah, way yeah, yeah. you know my first my uh, uh my temperament for painting yeah. uh i mean i've been i remember well the first thing anyone ever said about me as a straight painter mm. and, and and i i want to make the point that i was making art when i was a teenager yeah. but i was just using oil paint you know only oil paint and and, and trying to make paintings you know when i was 18 and on oh. and one of the first comments made about me when i was a student by dan gustin you know was that is that oh this this guy's like Soutine. And I was like, wow, Soutine is my favorite painter. It didn't mean that I was a great painter, but my temperament mm. is direct and mm. and wild, kind of, as what, what, what his point was. It was yeah. just, we, we like to yeah. talk about art in terms of other artists and things like that, you yeah. know. Um, but it's very true. I, I, I work fast, you know. I work, I mean, I made, you can't see all the work in this space, but I've made all this in a year and a half, yeah. you know. Uh, I made about 115 paintings last year uh, because I don't have a job. <laughs> this is my job. You know, this is what I do. Well, I was I'm managing a building, and but yeah. I, 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 this is what I do, you know, yeah. uh, and I have to do it. Um, I have to do it, and I, I have to get somewhere because I don't feel like I've accomplished what I want to, want to accomplish, mm. and that also is kicking me in the ass, mm. pushing me forward because I feel like I... There's a lot for me to, to now. When to, you say to accomplish, when you say that, um, can you like just elaborate a little bit more about what you mean by what you want to accomplish, or yeah. do you mean like finish a number of paintings, or do you no, mean no? No, like it's not about a question of all quantity. That's what I, yeah, um, I, I figure, but quantity just, happens because because you didn't do it in this one. So you're I figure, do it in I'm the just, next I'm one. I'm just trying to open it up. How, oh, I'm yeah. just trying to open it up more to like, what do you mean by? There are like a, a, a series of things like that, that the practice of painting always mattered to me, mm. that it always mattered like to that I actually do it because I love mm. to paint. Mm. Like I fucking live to paint. I know. You know, you know what I mean? Like He's I sleep I, in I, the I, oil. I, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know. And, and I don't the... really have, I don't, I'm not even very careful with myself about it, but uh, about, you know, health things, but um, I have to do it. Um, and, and in grad school, we, my my uh, I almost got kicked out of grad school because I have, in part because I, I behaviorally I was a little bit fucked up when I was there. I was doing being being a little bit a little bit unruly uh, more than I would ever be now. But uh, uh, it was difficult for me to finish a painting. Yeah. For a long time, I mean that's what they say about the coot. It helps yeah. to have that art history tell me, oh, it's okay. When I, it took me fucking till yeah. I was forty five to, to finish a painting, you know, <laughs> with, uh, you know, one artist like de Kooning or something like that. But I, I, I had a hard time resolving paintings, like get to the beginning to end, mm -hmm. and that was the thing. Uh, one of the things our, the head of the painting department said was, he said, you, you love painting, and that's why you're allowed to stay here. 
Wow. You love painting, but you have to fucking make a painting. <laughs> like to wow. make it, like to, to get from point A to point B. Yeah. It's just focus on one thing. Uh, I, I, I don't think that's entirely fair about me because I didn't make and yeah. finish paintings. But it's it's a kind of state of mind as much as, as anything. It's like you yeah. or, or you know, you, you want to... There's something else going on. Clarify. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So. You, you, wanna, you, you want to make your statement made, yeah. you know. And, and a, a history of modernism, like, you know, Picasso is always kind of like on my shoulder in some weird way uh, yeah. just as an example I mean the guy was a you know uh, a misogynist all these terrible things but he was also brilliant yeah. and he was it was right on and he was actually right on as a human being in a lot of ways uh, that most people don't give him any credit for but one of the things that he was really stubborn about and so many so many other artists but like uh, this 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 feeling like the modern impulse is to make your statement made mm. make your statement do it Bam, and you own it. You know what I mean. Uh, and so he gave pe people like uh, I, I mean, kind of crazy to me that like Picasso hated Pierre Bonnard. Uh, that's because they're so good. His paintings are so, and you cannot, yeah. you cannot deny that. <laughs> but be, but because the working method was different, that it wasn't. He wasn't guided by the modern impulse. Neither was Balthus. Neither was, or you know, everybody has their own temperament. Everybody has their own. But I like that that. And, and, and it guides me sometimes to say, uh, all right, make your statement, do it, bam, boom, you know, whatever. You don't need to, uh, uh, you don't necessarily, uh, you, you know, you have to say what you mean and, yeah. and, and, and what you do. And you have to, um, you know, you, you know, you have to be pretty resolute about about what 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 you're doing. You know, even if it's as simple as painting a dog or something like that, you you're making some yeah. kind of formal statement. You you want to say something in paint, mm. you know. So say, it. Yeah. Uh, um, you know. So um, you know, there are so many for me. There are so many things that I fixated on, and I just completely embrace and and. Uh, you know, the palm trees are like a staple of a subject matter that for me, uh, you know, it does matter to me. I'm a, I consider what I do having some very strong formal purpose, but there's the, the object matter of painting matters a lot to me. Like, like that is the stuffness in the painting, mm. the, the, the subject matter, the person. Mm. It's what I care about. Mm -hmm. It's what I want to bring. It's like mm. I want to... Bring it. I still have that impulse from when I was a child. Like I have to paint this person or paint this thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I want to honor it. You know, oh, and yeah. I want it. I want it. I wanted to 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 show that I know how to make it exist. You know that I know. <laughs> you know. Um. So that 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 impulse is still with is with me with whatever I whatever I do. Mm. Um. And I I I you know like I you know I. I've kind of developed a reputation of it, uh, for certain things that I paint, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, I'm fascinated by palm trees, certain palm trees. They're just interesting if you look at them, you know. Yeah. You start I mean, painting I get them, it grow because like weeds in the when ground. you started painting them is when uh, we were in the same studio in, in, on Olympic Boulevard and they were everywhere. Yeah. Right. They so, were just they were yeah. just there. So when how you started you, painting them, I had no question about why he's painting them like they're just there yeah they're they're beautiful they're and out on the sidewalk they grow, they grow like they're they grow. poetic like in presents you know place. in our city because yes. they grow out of the cracks and like yes. they have these amazing you know orthogonal lines they don't like die rival, <laughs> fucking fascinating yeah. they look like uh, what's his name mark grachen's uh, uh butterfly paintings yeah. they're, they're 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 like really abstract you know yeah. Uh, I, he had to have been looking at them because yeah. they just so mm. and the monochrome and and, and, it, and you can do a variation after the other, one after the other and it just became something that I identified yeah. with in, in in a big way. I mean, one of the things that interests me is, but I, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm interested in kind of social history of things as well. You know, like how do I talk about uh, you know things that matter to me that are not necessarily easy for me to even depict, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, one of the things that I embraced recently was I was really moved to hear that there was a, a stripper's union. Mm -hmm. I thought that was fascinating when I had heard about it. Mm -hmm. It immediately declenched this kind of thing in my imagination. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I thought of... Uh, 
ancient Greek comedy that Liz Estrada, I thought of <laughs> all these things, all these things that even politically, like how I, uh, some ideological disputes I've had with the Marxists about the Lumpen mm. proletariat. I said, these guys are going to like, prove you wrong and check this shit out. I'm making paintings about this. It's a, it's exactly like you to like find one thing and then find all these historic layers and <laughs> <laughs> like put it into a different perspective so that you have a bigger grasp of it. Yeah, know? yeah. Because you always try to understand yeah. something when you paint something. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's a way of learning. You yeah. always, you're always like... Oh. You, you, and you're never really sure what you're gonna get, you know, and that's that's a that's a really important thing for me. Like I don't, I don't really know. Like I I I had made a study. This is a 13 foot painting. It's kind of concealed, but like I had made just a sm small drawing of it, and I let it become what it became. You know, all I had all I had in mind is that it have three elements. You know, that somehow work together. Mm. And, and I don't know what it's going to look, I don't know what effect it's going to have on me when I make it. I don't know what it's going to look like. Mm. And, and I love that. And then it keeps me, keeps me wanting to, to, to make, you know, it's one of the things that keeps me wanting to make more. Do, do you ever plan the layers or the math behind it? Is there a math behind some of your paintings yeah, or is it just It's more random? intuitive, but there is, there certainly is. This is a geometric reality. You know, yeah. so I'm not charting the golden mean on any of these things yeah. or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not Piero della Francesca, yeah. but, but I am doing the same thing he's doing what mm -hmm. he did 500, 600 years ago, whenever it was. Uh, so we have to deal with, uh, you know, well, like the idea of composition, you know, composition is king. It's really important. And, uh, it's more intuitive. It's more like you, it's kind of a set calculated, but it's also kind of like, yeah, this seems like it will work. I won't know for sure until mm. I, until it comes out, but I've done this enough that I'm pretty certain that repetition. Yeah. Helps a lot. Cause you know what your, your head and your brain, your eye knows what it's doing. Can after you, a while. can, can you not even be conscious? Can you guess a number of how many paintings you've done in your life? In my life? <laughs> yeah. Just a guess. Thousands, I know. Well, more than one thousand, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't know, uh, uh, because it depends on what you mean by that. Because when I was in uh, uh, the the paintings are, are I mean, I built tea houses. I built, and that's painting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, and I built uh, the, and, and the, the canvases. That's uh, but you know, drawing. Nobody drew more than me when I was a when I was a teenager. I was drawing obsessively, and it's like not like they're all great. I, I should no, but it. I mean I'm just getting back to the point yeah. of like repetition. Yeah, is uh, also like key. My hand knows. Yeah, like your yeah, because then your hand learns and your body learns. Yeah. Right. My mother just told me, going back to my mom, she's starting 80 and really soon. She wants to learn how to draw at that's 80. Good. And I said, that's that's great. And I, I was a relief too. I'm making a gift for her, but I, I was like, I'm going to get you books and yeah. you drawing paper. We're going to do drawing lessons. Oh, I'm going to be a teacher yeah. and you're going to be drawing. And, uh, and one of the things that is helpful to do is, you know, copying. It's like, it seems like it's taboo, but that's how we all learn, you know, yeah. since when we were a little, little. Trace. To, yeah, yeah to, to, to draw as carefully as you can something that's, that's there. Because it helps your head. It helps you familiarize yeah. yourself with drawing for form and volume. And you can see if you're doing and it. And then right. you learn to draw from life. That's, that's like the... You're learning from life, you know. You can like how do how do I, how do you break down this into a, a two dimensional uh, mm. pictorial space, you know? The, and that and that's open. That's really open. But you know, uh, we all learned it by by drawing, you know, mm. drawing from other drawings or other paintings or other f or photographs or something mm. like. That. But you have. To, I feel like you know if you're if you're going to be a representational figurative painter or something, you have to get beyond. The, the the camera lens you have to get beyond your in influence it's hard to get out to get outside of your influences that have have shaped you because they're still present in mine you know um but uh you know i feel f fairly confident you know like i i kind of know what i'm doing when i have an idea and i'm pretty sure i know how to go about doing it there may be a little detour a little something like that but i i've developed uh, to the extent that I have confidence that I could do one thing, you know, mm -hmm. when I, like, what I said. Yeah. What I said. Well. What I've set out for. <laughs> I don't know if I'm talking too much, right? No, definitely not. You're talking the right amount. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> good. You're sharing great stuff. Um, but we are getting like uh, near the end. Okay. And so this is the point where I always ask anybody if, if is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to talk about? The mic is uh, yours if, if you want to just oh, share yeah. about something else. I mean, else. like just in terms of like current events kind of things. Whatever. It could be oh, something yeah. that you I mean, it's, wished it, we had touched upon or it could be um, something that yeah. you didn't get a chance I mean, to do. I, I, I could, in the story of my life, I think a new chapter opened in 2018 when a gallery in Morocco oh, yeah. uh, found me on Instagram. It's, you know, it's reason enough to have kept it. I mean, I kind of have a love hate relationship to social media <laughs> because it's obs- obsessive. It's like a yeah. brings out the ant impulse in you to constantly. Yeah, of course. I hate, it. With I hate it. it so much. It's so bad. But uh, but some great people have found me. I mean, amazing people yeah. like my gallery. It kind of, it's what keeps gallery me City working. <laughs> if I didn't have Instagram, I probably wouldn't be working. Right. Of yeah. course. We use it as a tool, yeah. you know, we use it for what, it's, what, yeah. what it could be used for. We have for. to use it, yeah. All right, so uh, that opened up something really important because I've been fascinated by the indigenous, like the culture of my parents and my father, especially uh, kind of coming from Morocco, and uh, they picked up on these things, these interests in Celis, these patterning, and uh, certain formal things that are that are derived from. Uh, a lot of different things that they that they that they really liked and. They gave me a couple shows, and uh, you know, I've never, I've never had that, that that kind of level of support in my in my career as an artist. You know, like mm-hmm. somebody was uh, really interested, genuinely interested. You know, mm-hmm. genuine people. You know, that are interested in what who you are, what you mm-hmm. do. The, the the people, the papers are writing about you when you get there. Mm-hmm. It really is. They roll out the red carpet for you. You know, because yeah. you're know, like a your son come home. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, in in, in some weird way. It, so that was that's something that, um, but I do I do have this thing where I kind of have like I, I painted all the strippers and you know, uh, there's maybe a little bit haram in in, in in Muslim Arabic culture to paint mm. about things things that are not a part of the social reality of of uh, another culture. Mm. So I do feel like I'm kind of like. Uh, you know, navigating different things, you know. Mm-hmm. But what's important to me is that I don't edit myself or I don't yeah. censor myself or right. uh, because I do in the end, uh, as I continue to work, you know, I'm 41 and I need, I need like 40 more years yeah. or something just to, to really bring this forward, you know. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I do feel like I have these disparate interests, they're just a part of me. This it has to do with what I grew up. I grew up in like Hollywood, you know, the walk into the streets of Sunset Boulevard, mm. walking to a Moroccan palace, and the, you know, and then <laughs> playing video games on the street, you know, at the yeah. local Seven Eleven or whatever. And those kinds of things have formed part of what I, my attitudes uh, mm. about even just what I make. You know, mm. like yeah, I'm gonna paint the homeless encampments everywhere, you know, mm. and I'm going to also paint, you know, something that a rich person will be happy to have on their, Over their couch, it's like yeah. whatever, you know, yeah. you, 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 you know, so, so, uh, and that has always been a, a frustrating thing. Uh, I mean, an artist I really admire a lot. Um, and I have for years, I trained Joel Hancock. Uh, he's a genius. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you'll hear this, but I, I, I might as well say it because he's one of my favorite artists. I don't paint like him, uh, but I admire him so much, you know, and he's so smart about these kinds of, and, you know, like he, he can, he underst- he can size you up. He understands what, what you're doing, you know, and one of the things he said about me was that I don't stay put. You know, it's like mm-hmm. it's like I'm not staying put. That's that's the art of not staying put. <laughs> you know, of of, yeah, of, yeah. of being you Bottom know. Weave, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I thought that that's a kind of wonderful and also, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, I feel a bit, bit uh, a little bit conflicted about uh, about the fact that I I I won't. I don't have that central idea that anchors everything. Yeah. Unless it's so big that I don't even know what it is, you know. I, I think I'm the same way too. I yeah. when I first had like my first 
show of something years and years ago I called it no focus no direction you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> that I want to create good place to start I want to make stuff I enjoy making stuff I'm driven by different things different things pull me to shoot it different things pull me to draw because I also have fun drawing and different things makes me want to record and talk and you know document yeah. things so yeah I get pulled into different directions and um, I, I see some of that yeah yeah um, that makes sense to me and I do want to point out that uh, the strippers that you were painting and all that yeah. became the first unionized. Yeah, the first. So they did accomplish. Uh, they became their my, goal, yeah. my friends, you know. I I I had I, I just, it happened this way. I found out that this was going on, and I'm a syndicalist. I have pretty radical views, but I don't necessarily yeah. talk about them all the time. But and I don't proselytize anyone. But I do follow what unions are doing in this country and elsewhere in the yeah. world. And I was moved to and and like inspired by like these women that were basically asking for safe working conditions from their employer and they got shafted. So they banded together yeah. to 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 form to to the pick it first their employer ever the, well no 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 the second the second ever strip the, fir- the only one that exists in the country today oh, the first okay. was in San Francisco was uh, oh. lusty ladies but I and but I still, learned about this the only one because that, it isn't yeah. really my world you know, yeah, know of course but yeah. but in a way in a way the kind of you know these people coming from this kind of demi mall of like the sex worker and mm. and. It, you have to care, like it, it's something that in yeah. you that, like you don't even know why, but somehow it, 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 it you know, for me, it like it, 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 it set something off in my imagination and my mind, and some, uh, uh, and and so I made a painting immediately, of 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 the of the you know the stripper on strike, you know, mm-hmm. with the picket line and and uh, with the picket fan, uh, picket. Sorry, I'm sorry, uh, and uh, and I reached out to the picket fence. Sorry, sorry, uh, words are a bit slippery for me sometimes. Uh, uh, but anyways, I I took interest in in this and uh, and I reached out to them and I as soon as I made the painting, it was like I have to sell this and I have yeah. to donate all the money to yeah. this uh, the action fund that donate. So yeah. so that led to the idea of doing a show. Uh, which I did last year with some amazing artists. There were like 35 artists. I think you were in it as well. Uh, it, yeah. The, one at the last project? It was a one-day like thing. Yeah. We were trying to raise funds, like kind of snappy. Yeah, yeah. And we did well. I think we made uh, $4,000 in sales in That's one good. weekend. Yeah. And now I am, uh, uh, in that time, I made about 15 paintings d- directly related to these uh, men and women who are, the first, their picketing actions are kind of street theater mm. in North Hollywood and portraits, like candid portraits of the individual dancers. Mm. And I made about 15 of these paintings and many of them will be shown in two weeks, mm. which will, you know, this month. Uh, in an Say exhibition. the date because I don't know when this is going on. Oh, out, yeah, yeah. Uh, July 15th. July 15th. July so this 15th. might have For a month long. Yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, so this is a, an exhibition I do with five other artists. Well, I'm c- co-curating. I've kind of curated myself into the show. Well, um, we're now at the end. Thank you, Thank you so much. Right. I don't <laughs> know what to say exactly. There's a I'm question like, that we well, ask. This is the end. No, there's a question that we ask everybody at the end of each podcast, yeah. and uh, it's a vague question. So yeah. feel free to answer oh. vague if you want. Um, but um, imagine if a being from another planet came and saw you and saw all the work that you've done and everything <laughs> that you've put together and like saw all the, the hurdles that you went through in your life and uh, and uh, the things that you deal with on a daily basis um, yeah. that are personal to you, looked at you and what would you say if they asked, Rashid, how do you do it? How do I do it? Honestly, I do it with a lot of coffee and a lot of rolling tobacco. <laughs> That's the most honest thing I can tell you. You know, you know. Rolling rolling tobacco and coffee, that's Rashid. Thank you very much, Rashid. It was a pleasure. Always a pleasure to talk. See you guys next week.